God in your heart and you may be seated in the presence of your father you may be seated you may be seated you may be seated hallelujah glory be to God glory be to God wow praise God we're almost there we are not there yet but I know that we have um, a lot ahead of us today that we're going to enjoy together so please feel free and get ready to be blessed even at this time hallelujah look to because it's the day that we cannot walk away or move away from the reason why we have this season this season of christmas of rejoicing of joy hallelujah if I have a reader, do I have a reader? Let's read Luke 2, certain reading from verse 8. Hallelujah. There were in the same country shepherds living out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in a swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on heart peace, goodwill to men. Hallelujah. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see the things that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the babe lying in the manger. In a manger, and when they had seen him, they made widely, widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. Verse eighteen, and all those who heard it marvelled are those things which were told them by the shepherd. But, the, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20, Then the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. Praise the Lord. Verse 25, of the same chapter. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the, sorry, and this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parent brought in the child Jesus to to sorry to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Hallelujah. I bring you this day good tidings of great joy. Now, <laughs> for somebody who say that, what are you talking about, Pastor? This season? Good tidings of great joy. Well, I call it the glimpse of hope. The glimpse of hope. I have a very short time, so 
Don't expect me to, you know, to do the way I used to, to walk around and begin to encourage you. Just focus for just a few minutes. What is glimpse? Glimpse is a partial vision, a partial view, a brief view. Brief, it's not, it's not what you, know, you see forever. You see it quickly and it's gone from you. But if you are sharp like me, it remains in your memory. You remember what you have seen. And you begin to ponder about it. You begin to worry. You begin to think of when it's going to happen. So a glimpse of hope. Hope is what you expect. Your expectation. So we are in a season that we need a breather. I'm telling you. We just need a break. Come on. But the hand is near. There is no break. Okay. I know you don't want to hear that, but that is the fact. That is the truth. The hand is there. There is no more break. There is no more break. But you need a breather. You need to be able to, to think and just say, after, you know, after a day's job, after you've been out, you come back and then you should be able to say, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day. Because now, <laughs> each day now is a blessing. I'm telling you, each day now is a blessing. Somebody yesterday had no coronavirus. Wake up today, discover that it's got coronavirus. Somebody had it yesterday. Today is gone. Amen. I mean, today is cured. <laughs> he doesn't have it anymore. Somebody had it and gone already. So what I'm trying to say to you right now is that each day is a blessing. But the only way for you to breathe in this season, to breathe properly, is the glimpse of glory. You need to see the glimpse of the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. There is a place beyond this place. It's the birth of Christ, I know. But Jesus came for this purpose. He says, in this world, you will have tribulation, you will have trials. But be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. There is a place beyond this place. Whatever you think you are running after now is coming to an end very soon. Oh, if you are expecting to hear something else on this altar, well, sorry to disappoint you. This is end time evangelical church. Hallelujah. There is a place beyond all of this situation that we are in in the world. And this is not the first time. In Genesis 1.1, the earth was void. Hallelujah. And the spirit of the Lord did what? Hovers over the firmament. And the Lord said, let there be what? Light. And there was light. Now, there was chaos then in Genesis 1. God had to step in to put everything in order. To rearrange everything. Hallelujah. He called the herd to order. And then gave us the Garden of Eden. Gave man the garden of it. And you guys, you know, I put everything in order now. Now you stay here. Enjoy yourself in here. Once you, you, all you have to do is to follow me, to obey me. Just stay here. You will be okay. But no, 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 no. Man was enjoying himself. And, uh, and, 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 and Satan was wandering about and entered the garden. Somehow, I don't know how. Maybe through the door, which I doubt must be over the fence, or through the window. But somehow, somehow, Satan entered, deceived man. And what happened? The man came back to being uh, 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 in trouble, in want, in, in, in fear. 
Because God came in to the garden. Remember, you know the story. God came in. Hey, then, where are you? I'm, I was hiding. Why? Because I'm naked. And God said, really? Who told you? Oh, yeah, it's the wife. No, no, it's not the wife. It's the serpent. And God redeemed man by killing of the, you know, of the ram or the lamb that was redeemed man, but got man to get out of the garden, send them out into the chaotic world again, go back to the world. And the man was like, oh, my God, I have to labor, I have to sweat. Man died, sorrow, pain, everything was going on again. The hurt was back to the kind of, uh, you know, form that it was. Hallelujah. Satan was then having fun, so much fun with men. They were killing each other. Diseases, pain, stealing from one another, destroying one another. And God saw that Satan was having too much fun. God now said, you know what? I need to go down there. I need to go down there to sort this out once and for all. Because, you see, whatever we are doing, whether you are in the Lord or out of the Lord, you are still a child of God. Okay, you didn't believe me. You are, you are, you are a living soul. You did not form yourself. The breath in you is not from you or anyone else. It's still from God. One way or the other, you still have connection to God. But God will never force himself on you to do his will. That is the difference. He will never. He wants you to choose him by yourself. So God sent his son. God sent his son to die once and for all. Hallelujah. To put Satan under our feet. To defeat him completely once and for all. But now, it's not forcing us. We need to choose him. That's the issue. Many of us want to choose him, but uh, the pressure of this life, our expectation of life, is not helping us or allowing us to choose him. And we keep wondering about doing whatever we want. So in John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, I know you know it of it, so let us let me bring you in there. So everybody, John 3, 16 says what? It's gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe will not perish, but have his lasting life. Hallelujah. So write it down. So because of the love of God, he gave his only begotten son. Begotten son, in other words, means himself. He made himself to become a son, to be killed, <laughs> to die, to shed the blood, so that the work of redemption might be completed. Hallelujah. So in Galatians chapter 4, verse 4, write it down. And it says, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. To redeem those who are under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. Hallelujah. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, crying out, Abba, Father. Praise the living Jesus. Verse 7 says, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Praise the living Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited that uh, this time we have the opportunity to come together like this, to lift ourselves up in the spirit. Because we have job to do. We have to get out there and shine forth the light of God that is inside of us. 
people are looking for hope, and we can become the glimpse of that hope they are looking for. I'm thanking the Holy Spirit right now because, it's, you know, I'm receiving some things right now. So, he's actually telling me that, do you re realize that you guys, I mean we, including me, we are the glimpse of that glory, the glimpse of that future. If this world is going to survive, we, they need to see their future in us. We cannot just be like everyone else. We need to show, show them something different that they can look up to, want to be like. Want to, I mean, imagine now, now he, he am so blessed that uh, this virus, God had not allowed it to hit into, into, this, into this house, Z Zion house. We have like 0, 0.0. 0 0.01 of this virus. I just don't want to be, you know, be too like uh, boastful to say that we have zero. Now, people should want to know what are you doing? How come you 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 went through the same place other has gone through and you came out on scale? What happened? People should want to know. They must be able to, I mean, you should be there speaking faith, showing, you know, uh, 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 um, showing them things to look up to, that you are not down in the spirit. First, you should make yourself happy. Why? Because you have the word. It says what? Well, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. Then you go out in that might of yours in that revelation to fill your day and every eye seeing you will see the glimpse of hope oh am i still with us the glimpse of hope is you and i not you per se like you say but that glory that is inside of you the bible says he that is in you is greater. Hallelujah. Say the spirit of the son lives in your heart. Praise the Lord. I uh, see you th thinking about rejoicing now. So let me just leave you alone for a second. The Jews, the Jews, the Israelites, at the time of the birth of Christ, were under occupation of Roman Empire. They were being harassed, being pushed about. They were looking for Messiah. They were looking for Christ, the anointed one, to come and relieve them, deliver them. So when those angels appeared, to the shepherd, it was glimpse of future. It was, you know, a, a, a time of like, oh my God! So now, now it is. So that is why they were disappointed when Christ was killed on the cross. They were disappointed that if no, 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 the the Messiah we are waiting for is the one that is coming to do or to deliver us from the oppression. Of the harassment, but not knowing that by the Spirit they were already free. Hallelujah. They didn't know that. But those angels appeared and they made this uh, announcement in Luke 2. Praise the Lord. In Luke 2, verse 10. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. You see that? To all people, not to Jews, not to the Israelites, to all people. Some people now, especially from where I come from, Africa, 
they don't want to be a Christian or to become a Christian because they think it's a religion of the East, the religion of the, you know, of, the <laughs> of another place. But they didn't see this place. I say that which will be to all people. It is only those that their heart is open to the message of Christ. We know that actually Christ came for them. So it was a good news then. So I'm going to close by telling you that it was good news then. So today, in EEM that we are having this carol, it is still a good news. Hallelujah. Good news in this situation that the world has found itself, like I said in the beginning, it was chaotic. And it has been like that ever since because it's the world. Jesus himself came and said to us that, guys, I wish that you understand in this world you will have these ups and downs. So you will have it. There is nothing you can do about it. But be of good share. You, you, I, I have overcome the world and you have as well. We are joined here with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Slap somebody and say, I am alive. We have a welcoming news, a welcoming news of great joy, good tidings. We are set. We should be ready to take it wherever we go. Those shepherds, they went rejoicing, praising God, and they actually went to tell everyone. They were announcing it as they were going. So if you are celebrating Christmas, it's all about announcement. It's all about showing forth. Hallelujah. It's all about making someone knows that, you know, a, yes, it's good we have all the gifts and, and, and all that is very nice, but it goes beyond that. Christ's birth brings us glimpse of eternal hope. Glimpse of what? Okay, let's stand to our feet, please. Christ, Christ's birth brings us a glimpse of eternal hope in the kingdom of God or in Christ Jesus. Three things as we close right now. It brings us restoration. It restores our confidence. Christ's birth as we are, you know, remembering the day, celebrating the day, Christ was born, which some disagree. I don't really care. I'm telling you, things like that, I don't argue, I don't care. You can say it's 25th of December or 10th of, I don't really care. What we are doing is we are remembering the Lord Savior that came to give his life, and he gave it. Praise the Lord. He gave his life. So we, uh, he, uh, the, his birth reminds us of what we have in him, which is our confidence. Hallelujah. So, number two, his birth, his birth brings us to, to the light. Hallelujah. When you remember the birth of Christ, it's all about the glory shining. It's all about the light revealing. Hallelujah. We reveal and you will see things. Your, you will not walk in darkness, but in the light. Hallelujah. Then there is hope for tomorrow. I have scriptures for all these things. If you want to know them, see me privately. Okay? But I will give you one. For restoration of your confidence, 1 John 5, 14 to 15. For the light... John 8, 12. I have about three more scriptures on those ones, so if you want it, see me privately. The hope of tomorrow, John 14, 2 to 3. The hope of tomorrow. This time brings us hope that tomorrow will be better than today. Hallelujah. 
So let's now turn to Revelation. Because if I don't read that, then I've not preached today. Praise the Lord. Revelation 21. From verse 1. Now I saw a new heaven. Now I saw a new heaven. And a new earth. And a new earth. For the first heaven. For the first heaven. And the first earth had passed away. Uh huh. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Now hear this. Go on. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Okay. There shall be no more death. Uh-huh. No, so, no, no sorrow. No sorrows. No crying. No crying. There shall be no more pain. No more pain. For the former things have passed away. Uh-huh. That's right. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I, I make, make all things, things new. new. Uh -huh. And he said to me, And said to me, Right, mm -hmm. for these words are true and faithful. Now, your CNN, your Sky News, your whatever, Jazeera, whatever you listen to, it's not the news. We have a new channel now, CNC. That channel it's important for you to turn to it every morning and at night. It's a wonderful channel, and it's called the Word of God. Christ News Channel, CNC. Christ News Channel. That's what you need to turn to. Because other news, yes, you will hear them. Like, I wouldn't know that we are in tier four now, if not, for, if not of the news, Sky News. But you see, I'll bring that news into CNC News to reprove it. Hallelujah. So that is what you need to do to keep going at this time. And as the prophets are saying, and have been saying to us as well, journey ahead is harder or it's going to be more difficult than what we are in right now. So brace yourself. Get yourself ready. Lift up your head. Know who you are and keep moving. Don't ever look back. Let no one question your faith. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Christ came for this to deliver unto us the victory which he, had, which, which he won for us on the cross. We are free people. Hallelujah. I'm not saying disobey the law. I'm not saying break the law. But let no one quench your spirit. Let no news quench your spirit. Glory be to God. Today is not the day. So maybe she she come back another day, or you can turn to CNC, which is the greatest news. I want us to worship Him that was born, died, resurrected for our lives, and today we are redeemed of the Lord. Let lift our hands and begin to worship Him. Praise the Lord. Just worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Give him praise. Is that the way you worship your God? Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. Give him praise. Oh, and to God be the glory. Come on now. To God be the glory. So God, be the glory for the God is a pastor. Oh, to God, be the glory. So 
that glory.